Welcome back to Computer Networks. Uh, so in the last video, we were looking at delay bandwidth product and some of the implications of that. And we're gonna continue with that uh, just for a little bit longer in this video as well. So let's think now about the case where we have infinite bandwidth and what kind of properties that that kind of network will have. So one of the key things, if it's infinite bandwidth, then it takes zero time for data to transfer. So now the latency is nothing to do with the size of the data being sent. It's all about the propagation delay uh, of the link. And thus we have what we call round trip time or RTT for short. And this becomes the dominant factor. How long when you send a message to the other side and for it to come back for you to be able to act on that, how long does that take? We completely take out the transmission time because we're transmitting the data at infinite speed. And it's all about how long it takes to get there and back. So again, this is, not dissimilar to uh, you know to interplanetary communications, where you know the probes that are on Mars, it actually doesn't matter what the bandwidth is, uh, that just to send any instruction to them actually will take minutes because of the uh, the speed of light propagation delay over the massive distances involved. And so the um, the transfer time. So if we have to do a round trip uh, to uh, to transfer something, and if the bandwidth Sorry, let me start that again. The transfer time will basically only be uh, the, the round trip time uh, in order to send and receive a message if we have infinite bandwidth. Precisely because, as is shown on the equation here, if the bandwidth is infinite, then we end up multiplying the transfer size by a number that is effectively zero. And so the transfer time is only the round trip time. Of course, in reality, we don't have uh, infinite bandwidth. We have finite bandwidth, but the bandwidth over time has been going up steadily. Uh, so when I was growing up, a 2400 bit per second modem was quite acceptable. Uh, and then of course we went to 56K and uh, to DSL. And now, you know, gigabit is quite normal to hear about. And so of course, as the link speeds have gone up, this has enabled larger data sizes to be used with comparable uh, delay time. So in some regards, actually the, the time to do many tasks is remained relatively invariant or much more invariant uh, than one might expect, precisely because uh, the, the data sizes have grown because the networks have allowed them to grow through the increased network speed. So this is actually, you know, this is a really good thing that networks have allowed this kind of uh, progress to happen so that you're not limited to, uh, you know, for example, a Commodore 64 operating system that fits in 20 kilobytes. Uh, now you can download you know, a DVD that might be, you know, two gigabytes uh, of data and thus is, what <coughs> the close so two gigabytes is 2000 megabytes and if we're talking about 20 kilobytes if it was two kilobytes it would be um, two million kilobytes in two gigabytes so we're talking about a factor of a hundred thousand times larger but we're also talking about networks that are of the same order a hundred thousand times faster and so downloading a modern ISO takes minutes whereas downloading 20 kilobytes on a 2400 uh, board modem would also take of the order of a minute. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, progress has moved on uh, in a positive way for us. And so again, in this uh, relative sense, as we think about the, um, uh, the, the different network capacities, the link capacities and speeds, the bandwidths of them, the kinds of links that we have uh, and how much we can fit in those really is just proportionate to the thing. And it might be helpful to, uh, to visualize this by thinking again about this kind of pipe kind of concept and saying, well, okay, if I have, you know, uh, a, a, one megabyte, uh, a one megabyte file that we want to fit into a one megabit per second link, well, there's a typo on the slide here, it should be eight times to fit into a one megabit per second link uh, because there's eight bits in a byte. But if we had a one gigabit per second link, uh, it would be a, a much smaller fraction. Uh, and so uh, again, then you have higher performance or rather you may even be able to carry data for more users at the same time. It depends what your goal really is uh, in that. And so yeah, it's just a, a visualization tool uh, that you might find helpful uh, to think about things. So that's probably I think what we want to, uh, all we want to say about uh, bandwidth uh, delay product 
and network performance and latency for the moment. Uh, thanks for listening. And again, as it's always with these videos, pop comments down there if there's any questions or anything that you have, and we'll try and answer those as best we can for you.